Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. How far you reckon it is to the North Platte, Captain? Ten miles, Sergeant. No more than that. Lieutenant Seibert should have the company bivouac there by now. You aim to follow the creek bed and clean up there, sir? Not after we water the horses. Ah, this spot's good enough. Yes, sir. Move up, Clint. Sergeant? Captain says we'll take a break here, ease those cinches, and lead the mounts down to the stream there in water. All right, Sergeant. After they're watered, they can pin graze. I'll mind them. Uh, uh, kind of peaceful, ain't it? It's quiet. Yeah, sit down, Gorse. More comfortable than the McClellan. Yes, sir. Yeah, them Shoshones, they got a way of wearing you out. You think they're still running, Captain? They'll be back. They never run for long. Not when they're hungry. I never heard of Shoshones as far east as the Nebraska border before. You can find them as far east as Texas. Only there we call them Comanches. They're offshoots of the same tribe. They sure don't talk the same. The dialect's the only difference. They're a disorganized lot, the Shoshones. I guess we can be glad for that. Yeah. Little of them goes a long way. How about the company, Captain? We'll know more when we rendezvous. Lieutenant Seibert says orders to make camp on the North Platte until the company's accounted for. I think we held up, sir. Yeah, I hope so. I sure got a thirst. Hold it, Gorse. You hear that? Like digging? Yeah. Up there. Top of the rise. I don't see anybody. Neither do I yet. Come on. I move small. She's awful little to be man in that space. Man, she's not too handy with it. She must want to hold Doug awful bad. That earth's like granite. Yeah, let's go up, Sergeant. Feels like she's alone. Yeah. <coughs> Ma'am, you, uh, you cut out a big job for yourself. I, I got no food, no coffee, nothing to offer the army. We're not asking for anything. Could have come yesterday. Yesterday I could have stood it if you'd come. You'll be all your life picking away at that hard pan. Haven't you got a man to do this for you? I had one yesterday. He's dead now. And a man's got a right to a grave. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Get Flint up here. Tell him we need a grave dug. Yes, sir. Where, uh, where is your husband, ma'am? In bed. In the hut there. Flint, I'm on horses and get up. Owl in here, sir. Gangrene. He's ridden with it. <laughs> Must have taken him a long time to die. Yes, sir. Got a broken leg. That's hard pain, Captain. Looks hard, Gorse. 
Here, we'll wrap them in these bedclothes. Right. Yeah, I may always take over this way when it's too late. It's best he's out of here, ma'am. You ready, Gorse? Yes, sir. Now, easy now. Don't... Don't bury him. Just yet. Grave's not ready yet. Drink it, Mrs. Dennis. It's hot, that's all I can promise. Been a long time at it. It takes time. Drink it, Miss Dennis. Luther was a long time at it, too, the dying. I know. All the things he's lived through out here. Indian raids and blizzards and drought, starvation. There's never been food enough. But a broken leg... That had to kill him. You're a long way from help out here. Yesterday. Just yesterday. And you come today. Yesterday would have been too late, too, Mrs. Dennis. Always before I I could do something. I freeze with him, starve with him. When's the last time you watched a man die, Captain? Yesterday. Did it take ten days, ten days and ten nights? Did you hear him scream with pain and beg for you to go for help and, and beg you not to leave him? Miss Dennis, <laughs> where will you go now? You got people somewhere? Oh, sure, I have people. Got parents in Philadelphia who never want to see me again. Two years ago, when Luther come back for me, they fought us all they could. They, when they saw I meant to leave with him, they said, don't come back. You can't stay here. The nearest to me is here. There's two dead babies out there by where I'll set Luther down. You can't stay here alone. Isn't safe. I'm not used to feeling safe. Captain... It's already out there. Then you can go now. Mrs. Dennis, this is no country for a woman alone. We'll take you to Fort Laramie. It's safe there. And You'll you... leave me be. It's not a brave thing staying on here. It's stupid. I mean to stay on with Luther a while yet. All right, Mrs. Dennis. Let's get back to the horses, Sergeant. We're wasting time. She wasn't much grateful, was she, Captain? We did a small thing. She'd no cause to be grateful, Flint. She's no mind to be grateful for anything the West gives her or takes away. Must have been a pretty little thing once. Kind of dainty-like. How old do you reckon she is, sir? Oh, early 20s. <laughs> Looks most half a lifetime to me, Captain. All drawn tight and mean. The West does that to a woman. They come here as girls and no time they're women. Old, past their years. She's not mean, Flint. She's soft as a kitten. She's born a lot, that's all. Oh, you think that, sir? I know that. You'd think she'd want to leave, though. No use her hanging on to the land. She can't prove it up by herself. She'll get out once she thinks it's her own idea. Right now, she thinks she can't face the thought of leaving him there. She's got nowhere she wants to go. Wonder, wonder what'll happen to her. I mean, alone, like that. She can't fend for herself, can she, Captain? Those women I seen out here would find them a man, any man, marry again, just to live. 
They hate the West. Chances are they'd hate the man, too. But they keep marrying to live. Now this one, Captain. You seem pretty sure, Sergeant. Just a feeling. She'll go back east somewhere. Leave her dead. Go back where she came from. She don't belong out here. Well, she's got no wagon or a stock to pull it. If she goes, she'll have to walk. Maybe she won't, sir. Maybe she won't. Come in. You sent for me, Captain? Yeah, Gorse. Come in. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse, ever since we got back from Horse Creek, the fort's been full of stories that make the cavalry sound like a wet nurse outfit. You know anything about them? What, what kind of stories, sir? You know any troopers who are going around collecting money to send Mrs. Dennis back east? Troopers? No, sir, I don't. I've been kind of lucky at poker lately. Thought maybe I'd share it with whoever's running the charity around here. I guess that'd be me, sir. I guess it would. Yeah. Oblige, Captain. You're not going to make this a habit? No, sir. You taking the money to her? No, sir. Private Flint's leave starts tomorrow after first call. He'll do it. That's all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. She, uh, she reminds you of someone, Gorse? Girl somewhere? No, sir, it ain't that. It's just she's so little and all kind of like a stray. She don't belong out here. Carry on, Sergeant. Captain Quince reporting, sir. Oh, I'm afraid you didn't do a very good job on the Shoshones, Captain. We didn't wipe them out, Major, if that's what you mean. You met them near the Nebraska border before, isn't that right? And they were hightailing it into Nebraska the last we saw, those that lived. Mm. Well, they're back, Lee. And in numbers, too. They're hungry in numbers. I'm familiar with your charitable streak, Captain Quince. I understand it's spread to Sergeant Gorse, right on down to the ranks. There's no cause for worry, Major. It's not widespread enough to be called an epidemic. All right, all right, Lee. The Shoshones are raiding homesteaders from our side of the North Platte, south along Horse Creek. I understand there aren't many settlers along the creek. No, not many. They're not just hungry, Captain Quince. This time they're carrying off women. Any questions? No, sir. Then move out. You smoke ahead, Captain. I see there is, Mr. Seibertz. Might be able to surprise them. Just how do you think we could manage that? Well, sir, if the fire's still burning, chances are there may be Indians around somewhere. Look at that smoke again, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir? Well? I still see it. Good for you. Then you see the fire smoldering, not burning fresh. You think the Shoshones have gone on, sir? They're not ones to sit around and admire their work once they've struck... Oh! Oh. Sergeant! Yo! I think we can find them, Captain. They're probably hours away by now. Unless it's a trap, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir? Sergeant, that's Carpenter's cabin ahead, isn't it? It was, sir. You and I'll ride in, Sergeant. Mr. Seibert will move the patrol to that rise to the left and hold the position. Two shots will be your signal to move in, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir. That's an old fire, Captain, smoldering. Mr. Seibertz and I know that, Sergeant. Any questions, Mr. Seibertz? No, sir. Then move out. Yes, sir. Come on, Gorse. It's 
carpenter. There, Captain. Yeah. He's cold. It is an old fire, Sergeant. Yes, sir. And it'd be his wife's brother by the cabin. He ain't been here a month, sir. That's all there was, Carpenter, his wife, her brother? Just the three of them, Captain. I, I don't see her anywhere, right? No, it's not likely we will. you think it'd be enough just to kill a man, wouldn't you, Captain? You'd think so, of course. Come on. No sign of life, sir? No sign of life, Mr. Seibertz. I was wondering, I Captain, know what you're wondering, Sergeant. Well, her place would be north of here, sir. Do north, along the creek. Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir. You'll take half the patrol and move along Horse Creek to the south. You see those dots of smoke on the horizon? I see them, sir. Well, check them. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse, prepare to move the other half to the north. Yes, sir. All right, fall in. Come. I'm going north with Gorse, Mr. Seibertz. We'll rendezvous at the usual point in the North Platte. First arrival makes camp and waits. With pickets out. Right, Captain. I'll judge the fires better this time, sir. Use your eyes, Mr. Seibertz. Then use your head. How long are you going to wait, Captain? Nothing stirred up there by her place. The troopers in position? Yes, sir. Full circle. Set back in the hills, all around the hut. Likely she's gone by now. Flint would have been through here with the money two, three days ago. Maybe. I'm going in, Gorse. You got a clear shot at the door? All the way. I didn't think we'd find her hut still standing. Well, we'll see, Sergeant. Hold your fire, Gorse. That came from the hut, sir. The army's not welcome here, Captain. You fire that again, ma'am. The whole patrol will move in. You have some money to give me, too, Captain. Oh. Ah. I will we'll talk inside, Mrs. Dennis. You all right, sir? No problem, Sergeant. How many men, Captain? Six. All around the hut. Six army men. After one woman. The Shoshones are raiding all along Horse Creek. You're lucky they missed you. Lucky? You can uh, bring a few things, but not much. Let's get them together. You didn't answer me, Captain. I asked you what you come for. I told you to take you back. I was real took in at first. I felt sort of kindly toward all the brave army men who put by the money for me. Private Flint was here then? <laughs> that his name? That nice, smiley one who dug Luther's grave? Yeah, he was here. Clean till early this morning he was here. I don't figure I owe the army a thing now, Captain. Not a thing. I'm sorry, Mrs. Dennis. You're always too late, aren't you, Captain? Too late for everything. I... I am sorry. I warned you it wasn't safe here. So your hands are clean. Your conscience is clear. I didn't mean that. Oh, you warned me, but I had in mind you was talking about Indians when you said this was no country for a woman alone. Indians or Flint or any man who hasn't seen a woman for a long time. And now you've come. Six of you. To force you to safety this time, ma'am. There's a safe place for a woman out here? Fort Laramie, for the time being. Flint was from Fort Laramie. Private Flint isn't the whole cavalry, Mrs. Dennis. You'll, uh, you'll get food there, rest. In a couple of days, there's a stage out for the east. 
with cavalry protection? Not unless it's called for, ma'am. <laughs> Go back home. I guess that's all that's left. <laughs> I hate that, Captain. I hate it. <laughs> I, I know how you feel, Miss Dennis, but I, I just want to tell you that I... You don't. You couldn't. You couldn't know how I feel about anything. I'm, I'm getting my things now. The stage driver says about five minutes. I wondered if I'd see you again, Captain. I owed it to the sergeant, the troopers, to see their money got spent the way they meant it. I wondered if I'd find a feeling in me to be grateful to you. Any of you. No one's asking for any thanks, ma'am. No one expects any. Oh, once I can forget... Maybe I can be grateful. You, you're better off leaving. Luther was a good man. I used to read all he sent me about the West. He, he saw the, the, the good of it. New and full of hope, that's how he said it. I, I never saw that in it, Captain. I never saw the good. It isn't all good, it isn't all bad either. But you're better off back home reading about it. Well, I, I'd better be getting on the stage now. Safe journey to you, ma'am. Thank you, Captain. And I, I, I mean thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Dennis. All set, driver. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He's in the saloon. You should feel right about things now, Gorse. You were the first to know she didn't belong here. I won't feel right till he's settled, Captain. It... Well, but how can he be now? The army can't touch him without Mrs. Dennis tells her story. She's been through enough. But how about him? Why, well, he'd have drawn time, plenty of time for what he'd done to her. Don't worry about it, Gorse. Well, now, wait, Captain. You can't do it that way. I... I've seen you like this before, Captain. You're killing me. I'll handle it, Gorse. You know what they do to you, sir. Killing him ain't worth that. I'm not going to kill him. But I am going to mark him up. Maybe he'll wish I had killed him. Is he drunk? Not yet, sir. In uniform? No. Still on leave. You give me five minutes emergency leave. Just five minutes. You leave him be, Gorse. That's an order. Yes, sir. Over there, Captain. I see him. You stay here. But, Captain... That's an order, Gorse. Yes, sir. What? Captain Quince. Hello. Set your glass down, Flint. <laughs> Not on orders just yet, Captain. Two more days of my leave coming to me. Set it down. Uh, he's got his rights, Captain. The saloon's not run by the army. It is now. Clear everyone out of here, barkeep. Now, you just wait. Sergeant! Clear the premises. Yes, sir. What is this? I don't know what you got in mind. I do. There's regulations on my side, Captain. I'm waiting to hear you say it isn't true, Flint. <laughs> Setting your saber aside... Taking off your tunic don't make you less an officer. You can't lay a hand on me. There's regulations. I'm waiting, Flint. You, you touch me and I'll go over your head. I'll tell my story to the Major. You do that. He'll break you down to my size once I tell my story. You tell him, Flint, and tell it all, because I'll be there to see you don't leave any of it out. And don't come any closer. I got every right to defend myself. You sure do. 
And put that chair down. I, I don't care who you are. I'm just like you now, Flint. I got every right to defend myself. Your saloon's looking kind of run down, barkeep. Looks to me like it's due for some repairs. Yeah, it sounded like it. But what about the customer? You just gonna leave him there? See, he's taken to the infirmary, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Is he bad off, Captain? I'm not the best judge, Gorse. I'd say a good army doctor could get him on his feet again in uh, six months, maybe. That saloon brawling sure is punishing stuff, sir. It's deadly, Sergeant. Well, what about me, my saloon? Well, I'd watch who I let in there after this barkeep. That man had a bad temper. Threw one of your chairs at me. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, John Daner, and Barney Phillips. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. CBS Radio urges you to follow through to make sure you're registered to vote next November, no matter which candidate you prefer. You are lost in making a choice unless you're registered to vote in a national election. Are you sure you're registered? Are you sure the rest of the voters in your family are? Make sure today. Registration laws vary from state to state. Make sure you're in the book. Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. you men at ease. 
I said at ease. What's the cavalry going to do to win glory today, Sergeant? I'm glad you spoke up, Suthi. You and Private Plover there have just volunteered to make mud bricks for the new powder oh, magazine building. Sergeant. No, no, Sergeant. Me and Plover worked in that adobe all day yesterday. Another month, you ought to be finished. I didn't join this army to make mud bricks. You refusing an order, Suthi? Put your shoes on, Plover. Let's get going. Now, the rest of you men will finish cleaning this barracks and fall out in ten minutes. I suppose you're taking them buffalo hunting, Each Sergeant. Each man will go to supply and get a pick or a shovel. We're building road today. Building a road. That's enough. I said ten minutes. You line up smiling and happy or I'll work you all night. You got your shoes on, Plover? Well, sure. What do I need shoes for? I'll be on my hands and knees most of the time. Ain't it a shame... Men like us doing that kind of work. Yeah. I'm ready, Suthi. Then let's go. Ten minutes, soldiers, and don't forget them shovels. <laughs> I reckon any outfit's got to do some time in garrison, Suthi. We've been in garrison three months. It's got me talking to myself. Well, leastwise, we ain't getting shot at by no wild Indian. What's a cavalry fur if it ain't to get shot at and to do a little shooting itself? All Indians around here is peaceable. Leastwise, there has been the last few months. <laughs> Reservation Indians. Them shine ought to be ashamed of themselves. Sitting around watching the women do the work, waiting to be fed by the government. Where's the gumption, anyway? Well... Good thing they is peaceable, I think. Them engines go on a tear makes it bad for everybody. They go on a tear to get us out of the garrison. Well, they ain't going, so you just might as well face up to them. I could make them go, Clover. Oh, now, stop that talk. I've told you how I could make them go. Now, look here, so I ain't even going to listen to you. Why, you could be shot for just what you're thinking. Nobody'd ever know. You know you're crazy. Being stuck here in a fort so long has driven you plumb crazy. Your mouth's getting awful big, Clover. Oh, now don't get on the prod. Look here, I'll tell you what. Tonight you and me are going to sneak off the post and we'll go into town and have us a drink with that gal you like. <laughs> that Ella Braden. <laughs> How about that, Sue? Never you mind, Ella Braden. You called me crazy. Oh, I didn't mean nothing by I it. ain't crazy, and I'll prove it to you. You put that knife away, Suthi. You got a knife? Get it out. No. Get it out, I said. I'm going to cut you, Clover. I'll do it. All right, that's how you want it. Now, there's my knife. Now, you cut me, Suthi. Come on, now, cut me. I'll lay your whole face open, soldier. Hold it, you man. Lieutenant Cybert, you don't mean nothing to me. Cap quits with him, Suthi. Watch your face! Oh, rip your belly open, you try that again! Stop that, man. Put those knives away. It's a fair fight. You got no right to stop Do as I say, Suthi. You cut me, I'll put mine away. I can't quit less than he does. All right, Suthi. You too, Plover. I know you're on edge being in garrison so long, but that's part of soldiering. And so is keeping your temper. Now put those knives away before we all get in trouble. Oh, there's mine. All right, you here to Captain Silty. There's mine. You men on detail? Making mud pies again, Captain. Then get to it. If there's any more fighting, you'll go to the guardhouse. That clear? Yes, sir. Move yes, out. Sir. Those men are crazy enough to have stuck you, Captain, getting between them that way. One of them might have stuck me, Mr. Seibert's, not both of them. They need action, Captain. They're soldiers, not laborers. Yeah, they're even forgetting to think like soldiers. There's going to be more trouble like this, Mr. Seibert's. A lot more. Captain Quince reporting, sir. At ease, Captain. Uh, how's B Company getting along? Well, Major Daggett, I guess B Company's getting along about the way you'd expect. 
Like those two men of yours last week who were going at each other with knives? I didn't know you'd heard about that, Major. I heard about it. I also heard how you failed to punish him. With all due respect, sir, it's my company. And you know I never interfere on a company level. I'd transfer out of here if you did. Oh, I'm sure you would. Uh, it isn't easy, is it, Lee? <laughs> uh, much more of this. I'll be looking for a good fight myself. Enforced inactivity. The bane of the cavalry. That and the salt pork diet. Two more of my men came down with scurvy today, Major. That's what I wanted to see you about, Lee. Uh huh? How'd you like to go on a buffalo hunt? Buffalo hunt? I thought we couldn't yeah, go I know, I know. General orders are to avoid antagonizing the Indians by hunting buffalo in their territory. We're sitting right in the middle of their territory. Twenty-two cases of scurvy are enough. Higher orders are to hold Fort Laramie with a full complement of cavalry. Captain Quince, you think you can bring in some fresh meat without starting a new Indian war? I can try, sir. I'm dependent on you. Yes, sir. You'll take 15 men, two wagons, and six mules. You'll leave one half hour after Reveille tomorrow morning. You'll return Saturday by sundown without fail, exactly one week from today. Any questions? No, sir. I hope you'll see fit to include those two men, Suthi and Plover, in your party. I intend to, sir, as Skinner's. <laughs> and move out. Hey, Shooty, how you feel? Not so good, Plover. I'm bleeding again. Or most to the fort. Hey, see the man? They're standing around waiting on it. That's what the captain said. Saturday by sundown, we made it. Yeah, some of us made it. Eight of us. Eight out of 15. That men killed. We done all right. Yeah, that can show. Hey, look, there's Ranger Daggett. He's waiting too, you see him? No. I can't see so good, Clover. My head hurts bad. Everything's kind of swimmy. You ain't gonna pass out now, are you? The way you got me roped onto this saddle wouldn't matter none if I did pass out. Well, these other boys hurt worse than you. I ain't complaining. Vince up ahead there, he passed out. Got him tied belly down across his saddle. Then I reckon he's dead. We're here, Suthi, we're back. I can't see nothing but the fort. Oh, my head hurts off. Control, Corporal Mercer, you'll remain with the wounded. They'll stay mounted. Sergeant Gorse, you can detail from the garrison to help these men down, get them to the hospital. Yes, sir. Rest of your stable the horses. Control dismissed. Uh, Mr. Sergeant Simon. Gorse, I have yes, sir. Would you take my horse to the stable for me? Certainly, Captain. <laughs> i better report to the Major there. Yes, sir. If you'd care to, uh, come by my quarters later. I'll, I'll find us a drink. Thank you, sir. Captain Quince reporting, sir. You're not hurt, Lee. No, sir. Good. What happened? Cheyenne. Over a hundred braves hit us. Dawn, two days ago. I had a guard posted, but they rode right over him. Seven troopers killed in battle. Another died in his saddle about noon today. Wagons, mules lost. I sent a scout looking for you. He never found us. What is it, Major? Cheyenne jumped the reservation? Yeah. And nobody knows why. They slipped out in the middle of the night and disappeared. I can't figure it. Big Wolf's been as peaceful a chief as I've known. Big Wolf's young son died a couple of weeks ago. Maybe that got him started. I think... You go right out to the reservation tomorrow. Take a look around. What for? No particular reason, Major. Just curious. Captain, I don't think them Cheyenne left a single thing out here. <laughs> 
Well, they sure stripped the place, Gorse. I guess when you ain't got much, you don't leave nothing behind at all. Oh. Got them all them poles over there with the burying platforms on them. Uh, what about them? They're all new, Captain. I mean, they're empty. There's no corpses laying on them. Can't be new. They must have taken their dead with them, Sergeant. I don't understand it. That ain't like them. Why would they do that? We're in quite a hurry. What do you mean? Look at that grave over there. It's half torn down. Yeah. Kind of spooky out here, ain't it? Yeah. Well, we'll stop in town on the way back, Sergeant. Now you're making this detail worthwhile, Cap. Yeah, I got some business at the post office. Post office? But I'll meet you at the saloon when I'm through. I'll be there, Captain. You can depend on me. don't make much money, but well, soldiering's an honorable profession. It's better than being a thief, ain't it? I, uh, I hope I'm not intruding, Sergeant Gorse. Captain? Uh, Captain Quince, this here's Ella Braden. How do you do, Ella? Pleased to meet you, Captain. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. I've been trying to explain to Ella that soldiers are just as good as civilians. I never said they weren't, Sergeant. Sergeant Gorse has been in the cavalry 20 years, Ella. He's still trying to figure out why. <laughs> I think you're right, Captain. It's all he talks about. Now, that ain't so. I mean, when you're being a gentleman, Sergeant. Oh. <laughs> you know what he did a couple of weeks ago, Captain? Now, Ella. What'd he do, Ella? Well, he... <laughs> nah. Nah, I'm too much of a lady to say it. Thank goodness for that, anyway. Ella, if Gorse gets out of line, just you whack him with a bottle. It's the only kind of language he understands sometimes. Oh, I got something better to whack him with, Captain. It's carved from solid bone. What? Yeah, I got it in this sack. Brought it in to show to the barkeep. Now, what in the world is that, Ella? Let me see that. It's an Indian souvenir of some kind. Where'd you get this, Ella? A kid at the fort gave it to me. He found it somewhere, I guess. Who gave it to you? His name is Suthi. Suthi. Well, what's wrong, Captain? This is a Cheyenne totem, Ella. I'm uh, going to have to keep it. Oh, here, now that's mine. You give it back. Sorry, Ella. You'll have to find another souvenir. This one's caused enough trouble. <laughs> Morning, Captain Quince. Lieutenant Mather, I want to see Private Suthi. Where's his bed? Uh, at the far end, Captain. There, where Sergeant Gorse is. Thank you. Captain? Gorse? Hello, Suthi. Oh, Captain Quince? How are you, sir? How are you feeling, Suthi? Oh, pretty good, Captain. Except for my head aching all the time. You'll get over it. I better. I can't stand it this way, sir. I wish they'd killed me if I got to go on like this. Suthi, you seen this before? I don't know, Captain. What is it? You know what it is. Where'd you get it? I can't help you, Captain. I'm sorry. Maybe later sometime. Now look here, Suthi. You know I won't take an answer like Captain that. Captain Quince. What is it, Sergeant? Would you step over here a minute, sir? All right. Oh, what do you want? Oh, my head. I wish you'd stop you. eating. Oh. oh, I see. Oh, all right, Sergeant. Aches all the time. Well, Suthi, I won't bother you anymore. I know all I need to anyway. I don't know what you're talking about, Captain. I ought to hate you, Suthi. But I only feel sorry for you. What you've done, I'm going to try to set right. But whether I can or not, you're going to have to live with it the rest of your life. I think I'm speaking for a lot of good men who died because of you. 
Sergeant? Yes, sir? I'll meet you at the main gate in half an hour. Have our horses saddled and packed with two days' rations. Move out. I find this hard to believe, Captain. Major Daggett, I... I've always tried to think of every trooper in my company as a real soldier. Somehow it makes me feel less of one myself when I find out about a man like Private Suthi. I can understand that, Captain Quince. I sympathize with you. Yes, sir. But what you propose to do about it is nothing short of suicide. I can't allow that. I'm meeting Sergeant Gorse at the main gate in a few minutes, Major. I'm volunteering for this mission. If he goes with me, he'll have to volunteer, too. Big Wolf and his Cheyenne are a mission for the entire 2nd Cavalry, Captain. Not for two men only. It was me those Cheyenne warriors hit, Major. It was my men I watched die. This mission belongs to B Company. To me. Not to the 2nd Cavalry. You're putting a terrible responsibility on me, Captain Quince. As a volunteer? I don't see how, Major. All right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Oh, Lee. Yes, sir? I'll give you one order. You're to return to Fort Laramie within two weeks. Without fail. More coffee, Gorse? I could sure use it. It's hot. I can see that. Thanks, Captain. Uh, this is better than Garrison, isn't it, Sergeant? Oh, it sure is. Night's full of stars. We had a good dinner of pork and chickpeas. Coffee's hot. There's plenty of it. Got a big fire going here. Lots of wood. There's nothing wrong with this, Captain. Except for one little thing, maybe. What's that, Sergeant? Oh, it's hardly worth mentioning. Oh, go ahead. Speak up. Well, from all the sign we've seen today, I'd guess we're smack in the middle of about four Cheyenne war parties. You no, know, I uh, think you're right, Sergeant. Of course, I don't know for sure, but with this bonfire we got going, I got a sneaky idea them engines just might catch on to our being here sooner or later. They might. Sorry you came along, Sergeant. I volunteered. Interest in mission, you said. Yeah. I also said we we might get killed, didn't I? You didn't say how. I don't know how, Sergeant. I bet I could tell you. Not interested. If we get killed, this mission will be a failure. Yeah, I say I hadn't thought of that. Now, that'd be a doggone shame, wouldn't it, Captain? It would. I can just see all them generals back in Washington sitting around a big shiny table saying that darn fool captain, that darn fool sergeant couldn't accomplish a simple little old mission. What's the cavalry coming to? That's what they'll be saying. <laughs> uh, throw some wood on the fire, Gorse. You're closest. Sure. Captain Quince? Yeah? They're here. All around us. Step back to the fire. Real slow. They can see anything at all. They they can see we ain't armed. They wouldn't show themselves this close if they didn't know that. They're coming in, Captain. Stand steady, Sergeant. No sudden movements. Sure, some fine way for the cavalry to go engine hunting. We found them, didn't we? What happens now? That's not entirely up to us, Sergeant. Easy now. Sure. Zila ho di na ye. Ye alo zilo. Diish la ye nya. Ye What's he saying? He says he'll take us to Big Wolf, all right. He says the chief wouldn't want to miss the torture before they kill us. (laughs) 
You, uh, you awake, Gorris? Who could do any sleeping tied up like this? It'll be dawn soon. I just ain't looking forward to it today, Kip. At least we'll get out of this teepee. You know, this is the first time I was ever inside one. I ain't missed a thing. Oh, I don't know. A teepee can be pretty nice when you got a fire going and a buffalo robe to wrap up in. Maybe some antelope steak for breakfast, a jug of spring water, maybe a woman to do all the work. Oh, you're spoiled, Gorse. Rotten spoiled. Well, it ain't the frontier life, did it, Captain? I can tell you that. Never should have left home. Oh, ish nice, oh, Valaya. He says they're ready for us, Sergeant. What was that? Big Wolf hasn't returned. They've decided not to wait for him. But Captain... It was our only chance I could have talked to Big Wolf. Not these other warriors. Not even worth trying. Ishlai <sighs> Ani. He's going to cut us loose. <clears throat> Why not? With a half hundred braves out there, we ain't going no place. They can tie a man up awful tight. I ain't even sure I can walk. I lay out all. Well, let's go, Sergeant. Sure. Sergeant. What is it? Big Wolf. He's back. Thank heaven for that. Well, it's a chance, at least. There he is. Say, he looks like a chief, don't he? Yeah, he does. Captain Quince. Hello, Big Wolf. My people are ready for your death. I know. We allowed ourselves to be captured, Big Wolf. This I do not understand. I wanted to see you. I wanted to bring you something. White soldier has brought shame and dishonor to my people and to me. You're speaking of your son's grave. White soldier come at night, left my son's body on ground. Yes. And he stole this from your son's grave. The totem, totem of my clan. The white soldier did this to dishonor you, Big Wolf. Cheyenne, recover honor in war and... By killing you. Let me say something first, Big Wolf. It was neither of us did this thing. It was a soldier who was weak and foolish and bad. This soldier has dishonored me as well as you. We do not want war with your people. Who is soldier? His name is Suthi. Give him to me. No, I can't do that. Then you must die. You have already killed eight soldiers, Big Wolf. Soon many soldiers will come. More soldiers than you have braves. Give me Suthi. So you can punish him? He must be punished. He must die. Big Wolf, when you wake in the morning and step outside your lodge, what do you see? Tell me. I see... The sun on the land, morning shadows, bright mountains. And if you could not see all this? It would not be good. The white soldier, Suthi, has already been punished, Big Wolf. By you, it is not enough. No, not by me. By your warriors in the fight. He is blind, Big Wolf. Blind? Blind for the rest of his life. His punishment will never stop. You are brave men to come here with the totem. There must be no war between our people. The thing is done. Seven of my warriors died in fight. It is enough. We ride back in peace? Yes. Then we've won, Big Wolf. We've both won. (laughs) 
Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Meston, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Jack Crucian, Howard Culver, and Vivi Janis. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. The time to fight heart disease is now, before another victim is hurt. Obviously, heart researchers may not find the cures and preventatives to all heart ailments the moment you contribute to the heart fund. But the sooner you do your part, the closer they'll come to answering the mysteries of the heart. Send your contributions to Heart, care of your local postmaster. That's Heart, H-E-A-R-T, Heart, care of your local postmaster. Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Eighty-three men for duty. Hardy and Simmons in the hospital. Five men on leave, Captain. All right, Corporal Mercer. Just leave the morning report on the desk. Yes, sir. One of the three new men has transferred out here from Fort Larn. have been assigned a second platoon, sir. Come in. Captain Quince, the supply train's on its way in. Oh, good. <sighs> Lieutenant Seibert's is sending the train on to the quartermaster's depot, but he said he'd be right here. All right, thanks, Jenkins. Oh. Supply train in from the railroad at Cheyenne, Captain. All stores is ordered. Anything to report, Mr. Seibertz? Cracked hub, two mules lame, one destroyed, otherwise routine, sir. Your command have a good time in Cheyenne? I think they did. I noticed a few skin knuckles. Any complaints from the civilian authorities? No, sir. <laughs> All right, Seibertz. Sign out to the quartermaster. Water and turn your stock out in the South Range. Dismiss your men. They're relieved from further duty until... What's that buggy doing in your train? Oh, I was going to tell you, tell you about that, sir. We uh, had a passenger, a lady. Lady? A Mrs. Wentner. She's the widow of an officer who was stationed here. Oh, that must have been Captain Wentner. Said he was killed by a Cheyenne. Oh, that's right. Three, four years ago, up in Lance Creek. His whole command was wiped out. That was before my time. I wonder what she's doing here. She didn't tell you? No, sir. Handsome woman. <laughs> I take it you enjoyed your trip then, Mr. Seibert? Not bad, sir. Hmm. 
May I give you a hand, ma'am? Thank you. Miss Wintner, I'm Captain Quince. Welcome to Fort Laramie. How do you do, Captain? Are you the post commandant? No, ma'am. That would be Major Daggett. We didn't expect you, Mrs. Wintner. Perhaps your letter was delayed. There was no letter. I told no one I was coming. If we had, we might have arranged a more fitting reception and better transportation. This was quite satisfactory. I rented the horse and buggy in Cheyenne, and the lieutenant furnished me a driver. You were very considerate, Lieutenant Seibertz. Thank you, Mrs. Wintner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to the train. Of course. Thank you, Lieutenant. Pleasure, ma'am. If you'll come with me, Mrs. Wintner, I'll take you in to meet Major Daggett. All right, Captain. Thank you. Uh, take care of the horse and buggy, Jenkins. Yes, sir. Did you know my husband, Captain Quince? Why, yes. Out here? That's right. I don't remember him mentioning you in his letters, but it seems to me there was a Quince in his class at West Point. Oh, I wasn't at the point, Mrs. Wintner. I was commissioned in the field at Shenandoah. <laughs> Up from the ranks. Oh, I see. Uh, here we are. Come in. Oh, Major Daggett, this is Mrs. Wintner. Just came in with a supply train. Oh, this is a pleasure, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Wintner? That's right, Major. I'm Philip Wintner's widow. Oh, yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I didn't know your husband myself, Mrs. Wintner, but I've been assured that his death was a great loss to the Army. Even more tragic for yourself, of course. It was a horrible thing. And even worse, a terrible, unnecessary thing. He could have been safe in Washington. I arranged it all with the President himself. I see. I could never understand why Philip refused it, but he was a stubborn man. Oh, well, he was very popular here, I understand. Isn't that right, Captain Quince? He was a good field officer, Miss Wintner. Perhaps he... He wouldn't have been happy at some desk in Washington. It might have been better for him to be a little unhappy and alive today, mightn't it, Captain? That's hard to say, ma'am. Well, uh, at any rate, we're happy to have you here, Mrs. Wintner. Sorry we weren't prepared, but I'm sure Mrs. Daggett will be able to arrange things comfortably. You'll stay with my wife and me, of course. Thank you, Major. And perhaps we can use your visit as an excuse to liven things up around here. We've had very few social activities. Might even arrange a reception or something of the sort. Major Daggett, I'm not here for social reasons. Well, what I meant was... Major Daggett, I came to get my husband's body. Mrs. Wintner... Your husband's not buried here uh, at the fort. I know that. But you see, I want him recovered and taken back east. I've arranged that he will be buried with full military honors in Arlington Cemetery. But his grave is a hundred miles from here, up on Lance Creek, where he was killed. I've already come 2,000 miles. Another hundred doesn't matter. I don't think you understand. That's Indian territory. Cheyenne and Sioux hunting ground, treaty territory. Aside from the very real danger, my orders strictly forbid any white person to enter that region, including my own troopers. Perhaps this letter will clear your mind. You will see it signed by the Secretary of War himself. Uh, yeah. Yes, I see. So, Major Daggett... I shall want to leave for Lance Creek as soon as possible. And you expect me to send you there with a troop escort, of course? The letter says every assistance possible. It also says within the scope of my orders and with due consideration for your safety. I'm not worried about my safety, Major Daggett. But I am. But in a case like this... There are no exceptions mentioned, Mrs. Wintner. What do I care about a treaty with those savages who murdered my husband? The treaty was made, ma'am, to prevent other men from dying the way your husband did. Captain Quince... I'm beginning to understand why these Indian troubles go on and on. I've wondered about that. Wondered why you didn't just wipe them out. I think you're afraid of them. It's not that easy. The Indians are people, too. They have rights. I'm not interested in their rights, Captain Quince. And I'm not interested in your orders, Major Daggett. Am I to understand that you refuse to allow me to go to Lance Creek? That's correct. I can't risk your life nor the lives of my men. 
and I won't risk a general Indian war. Very well. Captain Quince, would you be good enough to show me to my quarters? Of course, ma'am. Yes, sir. Dismiss the company. Yes, sir. Company! Prepare to dismount! Yes, ma'am! Fire off! Quince, it's all very impressive. The parade ground, the drilling. Yes, it is, Miss Wintner. Until you remember that in spite of all the military show, you're still afraid to face the Indians. Have you completed your tour of inspection? Yes. Lieutenant Seibert's has shown me everything, I think. It's all very interesting. Seeing the place that Philip called home. There's one thing I'd like explained, however. What's that, ma'am? What could possibly have held him here? What holds you, Captain Quince? I'm afraid I can't explain it to you, Mrs. Wintner. I'm sure you couldn't. May I escort you to your quarters? Thank you. I've noticed several men dressed in buckskins lounging about the store, the sutlers, you call it. Who are they? Civilian scouts. Charlie Reynolds, Will Granby, Pete Hazen. It was one of them, wasn't it, who found my husband up on Lance Creek? Yes, ma'am. Pete Hazen. He led the burial detail back. I must talk to him sometime. He's under the Major's orders too, ma'am. I meant Captain Quince. He might be able to tell me things about my husband. Things a wife would like to know. Of course, ma'am. You don't like me, do you, Captain? I don't know you well enough to like or dislike you, Mrs. Wintner. But it seems plain to me that you intend to disregard every consideration to get to Lance Creek. If you'll excuse me. Come in. Captain Gwynn's reporting, sir. Oh, Lee. I've just been thinking, uh, Caldwell's due for a leave. Who can we send out to the Clearwater Patrol as replacement? Is Seibert's too green? No, no, he'll do. He's come along fast. All right, good. Major. Major, what about Mrs. Wintner? Well, what about her? I think she's going to make trouble. I don't think she can. I've kept a check of the telegraph office and the mail. I think she's accepting the inevitable. I don't. I think she's determined to go to Lance Creek, one way or another. How can she, if I won't let her? I don't know, but I think you'd better warn the civilian scouts, especially Pete Hazen. Oh, he wouldn't be that much of a fool. I wouldn't think so either. But with her, anything can happen. I believe that. She's quite a woman. Oh, by the way, the evening social's all set up for Saturday night. Nettie's sending out the invitations today. Having a small dinner first. Uh, you're supposed to come. Oh? Uh -huh. As Mrs. Wentner's escort. Why me? Well, you're an inmate of old Bedlam. You're eligible. There are other bachelor officers living there, cybers. The youngsters. She's more your age. I don't fight it, Lee. Nettie's mind's made up. Only one thing I don't like about your wife, Major. She's a matchmaker. <laughs> yeah, I know. She can't help herself. Hates to see an unmarried officer. Especially one as old as you. And after all, Mrs. Wentner is a widow and mighty attractive. You could do worse. Major, some women are army, some aren't. 
When Phil Wintner came out to Laramie, he came alone. She seems to fit in fine now. Maybe she's changed. Uh, women like that don't change. Just the same you'll escort her Saturday night. You better present your compliments to her tomorrow afternoon. That order, sir? Tomorrow afternoon, Lee. White gloves. <laughs> Captain Quince. Afternoon, Mrs. Daggett. I'd uh, like to present my compliments to Mrs. Wentner. Why, yes, of course, Captain. Only, well... What is it, Mrs. Daggett? Well, it's very strange. But last night, Carolyn asked not to be disturbed this morning. Said she wanted to sleep late. But when she didn't come out, even for luncheon, I got worried. So a few minutes ago, I knocked and looked in her room... She's not there, Captain. She didn't sleep in her bed last night. Captain, where are you going? To the settlers, Miss Daggett. You better tell the Major. Lee, what do you make of it? Uh, it's very simple, Major. Mrs. Wentner was last seen last night. Pete Hazen left sometime before dawn with two loaded pack mules, two horses, one rig side saddle. He left this at the settlers for you, with a $20 gold piece. Hmm? Guess it's his resignation. Didn't want to get arrested for disobeying orders. Yeah, you're right. They're on their way to Lance Creek. They got at least 11 hours start. They've got to be stopped. Yeah, if they're still alive. How long will it take you to get B Company ready? Too long. Besides, a full company up there will mean war. You think you can get a small detachment through, five or six men? I can try. And if we're caught, we might be able to talk our way out of it. Well, they can't be moving very fast. I'd say I could catch them about halfway. All right, Lee. Take the men you want and an extra amount for each. Rations for four days and 200 rounds of ammunition. 50 rounds will be enough, Major. If we have to fight it all. It won't matter how much ammunition we have. <laughs> I've lost the tracks, Captain. There. There, over there, of course. Oh, yeah, that's it. I'd never believed it, Captain. Two days from the fort almost to Lance Creek, and they're still ahead of us. I underestimated that woman. She's tougher than I thought. She sure must be. Captain. Yep. And they've seen us. They've stopped. Ho! Miss Wintner? How do you do, Captain? She gave me an awful lot of money, Captain. More than I'd ever seen in one piece. Yeah, that's what I figured. You're not going to stop me now, Captain. Mr. Hazen says the graves are just over that ridge there. Miss Wintner, we're going to turn around right here and head back to the fort as fast as we can make it. Do you have any idea of the danger? Captain. Up there on the hill. Yeah, I see. Right in circle, signaling. Why, that's an Indian. It is, Miss Wintner. Oh. Captain, what are you going to do? Might as well go on up to Lance Creek. Do what the lady came to do. This is it. Right over there. This one. Just this? That's it. You sure? His insignia will be inside the rocks. It's so quiet here. 
so peaceful. Right now it is. Get a spade, Jenkins. Yes, sir. Ms. Wentner, you sure you want to go through with this? What do you mean, Captain? Why, it wasn't time for a proper burial. I see. Did they do anything to him? Cheyenne always do. You may proceed. All right, Jenkins. Miss Wentner, why don't you wait over there? Captain Quince, I'm not a schoolgirl. I came this far. I can stand to watch. All right. Pete. Pete, who was this? That there was Sergeant Tackerberry, Captain. One with a red mustache, Captain. And a laugh you could hear clean across the river. Yeah, I remember. And that one there was Lieutenant Williams. Yep. Captain, is that the Lieutenant Williams my husband used to speak about in his letters? I expect so. They were friends. All these men were his friends. Men who lived with them, fought with them, died with him. He... He wasn't alone, Ms. Wintner. They're all buried here where they fell. I see. Mr. Jenkins. Ma'am? Stop digging for a moment. Captain, you don't want me to do this. Why? I... I... I don't think your husband would care about being buried in Arlington Cemetery. Why? Tell me, Captain Quince. You knew him. What was he like out here? Like any other man, not very different. But he liked it. Like the country, the men, like the job. He was willing to die here if necessary. Are you trying to say that he came here to get away? That he didn't want to go back home? That he didn't care about me? He never talked about you, Ms. Wentner. Captain, all I want to do is take him back. Back to a hero's grave. He's in a hero's grave. Nothing you or I can do will add to that. You think I'm a selfish woman. I was thinking only of myself. Of my pride. Only you can answer that, Ms. Wentner. On the ridge, Captain. <laughs> yeah, they didn't waste any time. Must have been a hunting party close. They're coming down. Oh, it must be 30 at least. Doesn't give us much chance, Captain. Oh. It's important to keep calm, Ms. Wentner. Very important right now. What have I done? Bringing you men here to this. We may be able to get out of it yet. Talbot, keep those horses under control. When they get a whiff of those Indian ponies. Ms. Wentner, what are you doing? If anything's going to happen, I want his grave just the way it was. Jenkins, help her. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Watch her. Stay right behind her. If the Indians attack you, you know what to do. Yes, sir. Don't miss. I won't. What do you think, Hazen? Can't tell yet. They're still bunched. They ain't hurrying. But they ain't gonna be friendly. No, we're uninvited guests. Can't expect much. They're down and stringing out. And stopping. Right across the only way out. Well, they won't come any closer to the graves. Cheyenne custom, respect for the dead. Even the dead they killed. We're safe as long as we stay right here. How long can we stay, Pete? Captain, we might try cutting up over the ridge. Oh, the minute we break and run, we're finished. Uh, I'll go out to them. Might as well all go, Captain. There'll be no defending ourselves anyway. All right. Ms. Wentner? Looks all right now, doesn't it, Captain? Yes, it does. Well, ma'am? Don't worry, I'll be fine. Good. Now, everybody will move slowly forward, leading your horses. Move easily. Don't show any fear or excitement. It's Little Bear, Captain. At least he can talk some. I won't have to use sign. That's right, Captain. 
I'll do the talking, Hazen. Sure. Greetings, true little bear. White soldier, give promise. Stay off Cheyenne hunting ground. Why you come? We come in peace, not war. We don't want trouble with the Cheyenne. They don't want trouble with us. Treaties say you stay out. I know I made them come. The white lady came to find the grave of her husband. A warrior killed in battle here. She wants to take his body back to his home, to Washington. What warrior? The little captain. The captain with the yellow hair. Yeah. That one great warrior. Captain. These are the Indians. That's right, ma'am. Little Bear. The Cheyenne had great warriors killed here, too. But the Cheyenne could take their dead away to their proper burial place. Will Little Bear allow us to take this warrior with us and leave the hunting ground in peace? Better leave spirit of dead in peace. In Washington, there is a place to bury great warriors with much honor. She will take him there. Better leave dead buried. All right, Captain. We'll leave him. He's right. I know that now. Philip is better off here. In his hero's grave. All right, ma'am. Will Little Bear allow us to leave the hunting grounds in peace? Go. Thank you, Little Bear. All right. Everybody mount up. Easy. We'll move out now, before he changes his mind. Sergeant Gorse, how does it look behind? They're turning away. I figure it's all right. And we'll keep the horses at walk just the same for a while. Yes, sir. Captain. Thank you. What for, Mrs. Wintner? It was probably your presence that saved us and what you said. No. I mean, for teaching me a lesson. Uh, Not me, Mrs. Wintner. Let's say this country out here. It can teach you a lot of lessons. Maybe... Maybe I was wrong about something, too. What? Oh, just something I said about people not changing. Just... Just something I said. You know, we keep moving. We might be able to make the Daggett Social Saturday night. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Dunkel, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Jack Moyles, Harry Bartell, Jack Crucian, Helen Klebe, Joseph Cranston, and James Nusser. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, 
Another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Half a loaf may be better than none at all when you're bargaining for bread. But every Sunday, the Edgar Bergen Show calls for a happier arrangement than that. For each half of the Edgar Bergen Show seems somehow to be better than the other half. And with so much fun in store, there's no need for compromise. Enjoy all of the lighthearted antics of Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, Jack Kirkwood, Effie Klinker, Mortimer Snurd, Gary Crosby, Carol Richards, and the famous Edgar Bergen End Table Discussion Group. They'll all be with you again over most of these same stations every Sunday night. Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Well, I still don't understand it, Captain. I don't imagine the War Department worries itself about what you and I think, Gorse. What I mean is, it only makes plain sense that a troop of men ought to be called a troop, not a company. What's wrong with company, Sergeant? Mm, I don't know, Captain, but it kind of makes us out to be an infantry outfit, don't it? <laughs> that bothers you? I joined the cavalry, not a bunch of road builders and day laborers. I'm not sure Captain Lawson and his men would like to hear themselves called that. I didn't exactly mean any disrespect to him, sir. I know any frontier post ought to have some infantry stationed on it. But I just think somebody ought to get around to changing the designation company. A good enough name during the Civil War. I guess so. Oh, cheer up, Gorse. May take them ten years, but sooner or later they'll change it. And I'll be commanding a troop instead of a company. Yes, sir. I'll be a whole heap older by 85, and I'll sure feel better about it. All right, Sergeant. Have Corporal Mercer make out some copies of this, then post one at the Saddler's shop, another at the AQM stores. Yes, sir. Captain? What is it? Looks like Lieutenant Seibert's and the men coming through the main gate now, sir. Well, they're about seven hours late. Uh, come on. We'll go meet him. Platoon! Oh! Prepare to dismount! Dismount! That's pretty ragged. Yes, sir. Sergeant Glasser. Take over. Dismiss the plateau. Sergeant Gorse, have Lieutenant Cybers report to the orderly room as soon as he's free. Yes, sir. Well? Captain. What is it, Gorse? Say it out. Lieutenant Cybers is awful young, and he come here straight from the point. I know that, Sergeant. You, uh... You want me to be patient with him, that it? Something like that, sir. This is Indian country, Gorse. There's not time for a man to be young. I've been patient with him for three months now. Yes, sir. But there's something else this time. What's that? His column out there is one man short. I can see the empty saddle, too, Sergeant. Just have the lieutenant report to me. Yes, sir. (laughs) 
Lieutenant Seibert's reporting the captain is ordered. Stand at ease, Mr. Seibert's. You've just completed a fairly routine mission, Mr. Seibert's. that correct? Yes, sir. If I recall, your orders were simply to take a platoon from B Company, proceed along the wagon road to Fort Collins, accept delivery of 60 remounts from Garrison Quartermaster, and return to Fort Laramie. Yes, sir. That's correct. You were to hold strictly to the route assigned, avoid all contact with Indian irregulars or any action which might provoke hostilities or reprisals. Were those your orders or not? Yes, sir. They were. Were they clear? Did you understand them? Yes, sir, but... Just I... ride to Fort Collins and bring back 60 horses. Those were your orders. Now, why didn't you carry them out? I did, sir, until circumstances changed things. Circumstances I... never change in order. The most you can do is alter the way you carry it out. All right, let's take a look at the way you carried out your orders. Sir, Up I... until last night when you bivouacked, everything had been normal. Then, during the night, a band of Indians jumped you and got away with 35 head of horses. Why? Because you'd already violated one order. A standing order applying to all night camps in Indian country. To use four sentries on the picket line and four more out in the points. You'd only posted three altogether. We were only four hours from the fort, sir. I thought... Then you violated three more orders. You sent a detail in to the fort with the horses you had left, and you led the rest of the column in pursuit of the Indians. But, sir, I... In doing so, you left your assigned route, you made deliberate contact with the Indians, and you committed an act you knew would provoke hostilities. In fact, you did everything but tear up your orders and feed them to your mount. But they'd stolen the horses, sir, and they'd... Those horses had been placed in my charge. I couldn't let them get away with it. Why couldn't you? You're an officer of the United States Cavalry, Mr. Seibertz. You're not permitted the privilege of getting mad and hitting back. We've got a job to do out here, a tough one. To keep order over an area of 10,000 square miles. And to do it without men or the guns we need. I know that, sir. We're sitting on a powder keg, Lieutenant. Every minute of the day and night, and don't you ever forget it. Just because some Indian strikes a match, that gives you no excuse to light one in return. That clear? Yes, sir. You brought back an empty saddle. How did it happen? We were ambushed, sir. Private Lineley was killed in the first volley. Corporal Dean and Private Wagner were wounded. We killed two of the hostiles before withdrawing. Did you bring in Lineley's body? I'm sorry, sir. We were unable to recover it. All right, that's all, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Captain Quince... Shall I uh, expect a board of inquiry? That's up to the Major. Sir, won't he go by your recommendation? I can't be expected to cover up for every green lieutenant who comes off the point. I'll give him the facts. Without recommendation? That'll be all, Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, Captain. You can't expect to cover up for every green lieutenant who comes off the point. And I wouldn't attempt it, Major, but I still accept full responsibility for Mr. Seibert's actions. Actions? The way I hear it, uh, unofficially, of course, he simply lost his head, violated his order. Maybe I didn't make the orders clear to him, sir. Clear to him? How could he possibly misunderstand a simple mission like that? He's young, Major. We do things different out here in the frontier. It takes a wild ease into it. We haven't got a while. You'll realize that, sir. Left his route, attacked a band of Indians, and Lord knows what else. Major Daggett, you asking me for a detailed report? Yes, of course I'm asking for... Oh, no. No, by heaven, you've already accepted responsibility. I don't want to know the details, at least not officially. Whatever you want, sir. You mean whatever you want. Confounded, Lee. You mother that troop of yours like an old hen with a flock of chicks. Yes, sir. You'll take them out in the woodshed and whale the daylights out of them yourself, but you'll be hanged if you'll ever let the neighbors find it. Yes, sir. All right, you've accepted responsibility, so I'll let it go at that. Good. Provided you also accept the responsibility for pulling us out of the fire. A band of renegades, whoever they were, have attacked a cavalry column, stolen 35 horses, and killed a trooper. If they get away with it, more Indians will jump reservation and join up with them. I think we can prevent that, Major. With your permission, I'd like to have a try at it. What'll you need? 
Forty picked men from B Company, a second in command, and half a dozen of the best Indian scouts at the fort. Quanto for one, Dancing Fox, and maybe Will Granby and Pete Hazen. All right. Who will you take as your second? Peterson? No, sir. Lieutenant Seibertz. <laughs> You're handicapping yourself. I'd uh, like to move out by one o'clock. That way a forced march will put us at the site of the ambush before dark. All right, Captain Quince. Make your arrangements. Thank you, sir. Oh, and Captain. Yes, sir? Good luck. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Gores? Yes, sir? Just what do you find so funny? What? Nothing, Captain. Nothing at all. Lieutenant Seibert's reporting, sir. We're ready to move out on order. Good. Sergeant Gorse? Yes, sir? What do the scouts say? Quanto talked with the scouts that were with the lieutenant at the ambush, sir. He's pretty sure they're a bunch of Cheyenne, bison clan, with Squaw Dog leading them. Squaw Dog. How many Braves? Around 30, sir. And Quanto thinks they won't be very far away. I agree with him. This time of year, they're not likely to go north of the Laramie Mountains or west of the Sweetwater Ridge. Ten to one, they'll hole up somewhere in the Butte country, this side of the Laramie foothills. Well, that's what Quanto thinks, too, sir. All right, Sergeant. Tell Quanto and the other scouts to move out. They can cut the sign at the side of the ambush before the column arrives. We'll be there at five. Yes, sir. Quanto, you and Will Granby move out. All right, Mr. Sabitz. Post. Soldier. Scouts have moved out, sir. Right, Sergeant. You, uh, get coffee this morning, Gores? Yes, sir. I'm glad. I have a feeling it might be a spell before you get any more. Mr. Seibert? Yes, sir. You will move out with a point. Once we clear the fort, you will deploy the men as skirmishers. Yes, sir. By the column of two's left. On the guide on! Forward! 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 Oh! Captain? What is it, Gorse? I sure do like getting out in the open air now and then. I just hope you feel that way two days from now. I think I will, sir. I think I will. <laughs> Lieutenant Cybert reporting, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. I've checked over the mount, sir, there, standing it well, all in good shape. Private Harrison's mount has a stone bruise, not serious. Fine. Hey, you uh, got a match, Seibert's? Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. Sit down. Rest your feet. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Captain, uh, may I ask what the plans are? Uh, we'll let the men rest here till midnight, then push on north following the river. Unless Quanto or one of the other scouts makes contact before then. And after that, sir, when we find Squad Dog and his men. No plans. At least no detailed plans. As a matter of information, Lieutenant, or instruction, as you might say, I'm operating under one general order. To get the horses back. Punish the Indians responsible for stealing them and for killing Private Lineley, and do it without starting a blood feud. You pardon my saying it, sir. It sounds like a difficult mission. Most of the jobs the cavalry does out here are difficult, Lieutenant. In time you'll realize that. I'm beginning to, sir. Hope so. Who goes there? Advance and be recognized. One go. Go. Captain Quince, it's Quanto, sir. Uh, over here! Any luck, Quanto? Much luck. Fine squaw dog. Where? Up river at Ponowico Fork, one mile west. Camp in Buttes. Ponowico Fork. And the forced march, we can make it before dawn. Corporal Mercer, get my horse. Yes, sir. Mr. Syverts, I'm going to ride out with Quanto and get a look at him. You'll take command of the column. Yes, sir. Have the men tie down their bridle chains, muffle all equipment, stay by the river, but keep moving. Wait at the fork if I haven't rejoined you. Sergeant Gorse knows where it is. That clear now? Yes, sir. All right, Quanto, lead out. Carry on, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Bugler! Sound right. boots and saddles! Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse! Yes, sir. We'll move out in ten minutes. Well, that's him, all right, Lieutenant. If it was anybody else, a point flanker would have stopped him. I wonder what he plans to do. I just wouldn't know, sir. I never try to outguess the captain. He's a good officer, Sergeant Gorse. You couldn't find any better, sir. When we got a little time, I want to tell you something else about him. Made good time, Mr. Syberts. Thank you, sir. Be full dawn about half an hour. Things are working out fine. There are about 30 of them camped in a narrow ravine between those two buttes there to the west. Luck sure is with us, Captain. The ravine's about 150 yards long. Only way out's at either end. Sides are too steep to climb. So here's what we'll do. Sergeant Gorse will send four men to each of those two buttes. They'll climb on foot, take positions on the rim of the ravine, looking down on Squaw Dog's camp. Understood? Yes, sir. Lieutenant, you'll take 12 men and circle south to come up on the far side of the buttes. You'll approach on foot, establish a skirmish line to command the mouth of the ravine. It's all broken ground. There's plenty of cover. You'll have 20 minutes to get in position. That clear? Yes, sir. I'll move in, cover this end of the ravine. You'll fire at will on your own discretion as soon as you hear my guns open up. And with this point in mind... Don't kill a single Indian unless you have to, to keep from being overrun. But sir, That's an order, Lieutenant. This whole operation is just one purpose. I want Squaw Dog to realize one thing fast, that he's trapped, and that we can kill him and every one of his braves if we so choose. After that, we'll... Well, we'll just see what happens. That clear to both of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, move out. <laughs> It's 20 minutes now, Captain. Then we'll assume Syberts is in place. All right, Sergeant. Let's wake him up. Yes, sir. Prepare to fire! Ready? Fire! Hit him again, Sergeant. Ready? Fire! At the ready, hold! 
Well, that ought to show him it'll be a little rough trying to come out this end. He ain't even going to try it, sir. Not one brave has shown up at the end of that ravine. There you go the boys up on the rim. That'll give him something else to think about. Well, he ought to run into Sabbats down there at the far end any second now. There he goes now. We've stopped firing. <laughs> We've turned him back. Well, Gorse, I guess we can settle back now and wait. What do you figure squad dogs are going to do, sir? I know what I'd do. I'd hightail it out here and talk things over. You got a match, Sergeant? If Squaw Dog wishes to say something to the captain, let him get off his horse and speak the English he learned in mission school. And let him hand me his rifle. Squaw Dog, ask why it is white man's soldier attack peaceful hunting party. Is it possible Squaw Dog thinks I'm a fool? All Cheyenne, no. Captain is wiser of all men. Then is it possible that Squaw Dog has lost his eyesight and gone blind? Squaw Dog sees like the eagle. Then why can't he see 35 horses in there, in that ravine, with the mark of the white man's government on their flanks? Or is it possible that some of the chief's braves have made a fool of him? A fool? Could it be that some of them have stolen horses and killed a soldier of the white man's army and Squaw Dog knows nothing about it? Could it be that they've lied to you? Told you they traded for the horses? Are you a chief, Squaw Dog? Or a fool whose men laugh at him behind his back. I am a chief. Then why are you not able to control your men? Why are they able to fool you so easily? Have you lost your authority? I am chief. If you were chief, you would identify the guilty men and punish them yourself. Why is it necessary for the white man's army to do your job for you? I do not know who does this thing. Well, I'll give you five minutes to find out. And if you can't, then we'll look for the guilty men with bullets. And a bullet has no eyes, Squaw Dog. It can't tell the guilty from the innocent. How many brave you say do this thing? I don't know. But one trooper was killed. I'd say it would take about four braves to kill a trooper. Squaw Dog... Go now. Just five minutes. And when you come out, leave the government horses in the ravine and leave your rifles there, too. We do not keep rifle. You do not. It may help remind you to supervise your braves more closely in the future. Now get going. Five minutes are just about up, Captain. Yeah. He may decide to fight, but I was hoping he'd take the bait. He took the bait, Captain. Yeah. Well, it's rough justice, but it's better than a blood feud and a punitive campaign by a full regiment. There they come, sir. They're riding out. All right. Let Mr. Sibert's know he can follow him through. Yes, sir. Bugler, sound recall. Well, they probably shot the four oldest. Mm, probably. Have Squaw Dog and his braves stand by till Lieutenant Sibert's gets here. He took part in the action. He has the right to share the surrender. Yes, sir.
Guilty braves are punished. Squaw dog is free to go now. Yes, you have my permission. Go. Oh, just one more thing, squaw dog. Every chief should have a rifle, but you have none. No. I will permit you to have a rifle, squaw dog. Here, take this one. Now, go in peace. Peace. Boy, Bloody old reprobate. Revenge is a luxury out here on the frontier, Sergeant. Better this way in the long run. Captain, why'd you give him back his gun? Because that gun will break his back, Lieutenant. He took that rifle off of Trooper Lineley's dead body. I saw the serial number. That made him a big man with the clans. Then we outfoxed him, forced him into a spot where he had to execute his own braves to save his skin. And as a final gesture of contempt, I gave him back the gun. That'll break him. It'll save lives in the long run. They'll laugh him off the reservation before the month's out, and... What's wrong, Lieutenant? I... I caught a bullet, sir. One of the Indians the other end of the ravine. It's not serious. Why didn't you get attended to? I... Well, I had direct orders to report to you at once. A bullet wound's an exception, Lieutenant. Go find Corporal Grayley and get him to dress that. Yes, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yes, sir? About that board of inquiry. I... I heard about it, sir. Who from? Sergeant Gorse, sir. Gorse? Captain. He's going to do all right. He'll make a good soldier. He'll do better than that, Sergeant. He'll make a good cavalryman. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Les Crutchfield, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Joseph Cranston, and John Daner. Company, attention! Dismiss! Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Now, a public service message from CBS Radio. In time of flood or fire or other disaster, feeling sorry for the victims is not enough in itself to help those victims resume their normal ways of life. When disaster strikes, someone must be on the spot and on the job to help. And with your support, the Red Cross will be on the job wherever and whenever emergencies arise. Join and serve your local Red Cross chapter now and enjoy knowing that your membership and your contributions are helping people when a need arises throughout the months ahead. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for Fort Laramie. I hope you enjoyed the show. I really am enjoying the show. It's a new show for me. But this is, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just good.
but I really appreciate everybody tuning in for the live. Everybody that joined us in the chat, we had a great time. I'm like the old time announcers here. I'm not talking about anchor hawking or Petri wine or giant balloon animals, but I do want to tell you about the Johnny Dollar Club. This channel is currently not monetized by YouTube, so we need your support to keep going, keep these streams going, keep these videos going, and you can support us for just a dollar a month. If you'll just click the links below, we got links through Patreon, buy me a coffee, check those out, join the Johnny Dollar Club, starts out at just a dollar a month. And when you join, not only do you support the channel, but you get access to some exclusive content.